Welcome to the Good Talk Podcast, where we remind you of the joy of life, the love of God, and the possibilities that lie ahead. Pete and Jordan here with episode 56. Hope changes everything. Ooh, that kind of sounds like a... Oh, I was thinking Hope Floats. Was Reese Witherspoon in Hope Floats? I don't know. I've never seen it. You've never seen Hope Floats? No. If it's a movie, I'm thinking... All I can think about is Coke Floats when you say it, or Rupert Floats. <laughs> if it's the movie I'm thinking it is, you're going to love it. We're going to really? watch it tonight. Okay. We haven't watched Hope the other... Hope Floats. I think it, it, it was like, they're like in Alabama. No, that's Sweet Home Alabama. Oh. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Oh What's my Hope gosh. Floats? I don't know. Do you have your phone? We can look it up. No, I'm not looking it up right now. It's ridiculous. Ah. Where do we... Hope changes everything. Wasn't that like a subtitle to one of your books? I don't or know. Or a tagline? Maybe. Maybe. Could have been. <laughs> humble. Humble plug. Just kidding. Um... <laughs> I hope changed everything. So we're going to talk about what, like, ways to instill hope in your life. Five ways to cultivate hope. I do. I really do believe that hope changes everything. Two two things really in my personal life. One of them involves you. Uh, has really ins- inspired uh, me to talk about this topic of hope. Awesome, good stuff. And, and in case y'all know, don't know, I think this is kind of an interesting fact. We don't really talk about what you're going to talk about. Mm-mm. Unless I have like an exercise you want me to do, but otherwise we don't talk about it, no. which I think is interesting and good for you to know so that you don't know that I'm not like sitting here like faking like I don't know what he's going to say. Are you saying that now because you're afraid it's going to be bad and you don't want to be no, associated with no, it? No, I, I actually, I thought about it the other day because I had someone actually ask and they were like, do you know the whole time what he's, what he's like all the points he's going to make? Because a lot of times I'll say a point that you've mm-hmm. done, yeah, like, yeah. like you had, you were going to say. Um, so I say all that to say, like, I think the goal is that I'm hearing it as you are. So hopefully my reactions a lot of times to the questions you'd have. Anyways. Speaking of hearing, we had a mile marker with our daughter this week. I think it's like revolutionary. I don't know. I, I, I'm not sure I'm buying it yet. So we compete all the time trying. Pepper, as far as we know, has not spoken an actual word yet. But as you know, there's a game that new parents play. And it's called... I want you to say dad at first. <laughs> cool. Cool name. <laughs> no, everybody everybody competes for that and I do. And we just playfully it's like say dad 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 and she has not. She said mama. I don't know if she said mama or if it was just mama mama mama. <laughs> okay, well if she said da, 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 you would have claimed it too. So I, would have, yes. I am Counting it as a win. Uh, and she I has win. said it over and over since then. But I've never seen her say it like reaching her arms out for you like, ma, 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 ma. <laughs> I don't know. I have a couple videos that would beg to differ that. But anyways, I think it's only fair considering that I carried her and then had to deliver her. So that is just a tiny little consolation I prize. That. I will give you that for all the sacrifices you've made. <laughs> I would give you that. Um, we're still doing keto. Not that you guys care. Um, we talked about like a couple weeks ago that we were just starting this new like eating plan um, called keto, which is basically just a very low carb to no carb diet. Um, and so we've been doing that. And we both have had results, which is yeah. like great, I guess. That's kind yeah. of the point of eating extra healthy. Um, I, I really I don't care about the weight right now. Yeah, but you don't. I like the I like the eating healthy, and so far I've really I've enjoyed like the things like yesterday I ate a peanut butter sandwich, but it wasn't real peanut butter. It was real peanut butter. Oh. It just didn't have all the sugar and oil, oh. like hydrogenated oils and stuff. It was just purely peanuts. Yeah, and it was great. I actually I loved it. So I've been like I felt great about the I like the keto bread. It's not bread. We don't know what it is, <laughs> which may be a problem. I but don't know. No, like so. No, I'm. I've been. Yeah, I've it's been, been. It's been good. I think. It, I feel like lighter, not like weight wise, but you know how you don't have like the bloating and yeah, stuff. Yeah. I really appreciated that, and I've had to pretty much give up diet coke. Which, if you know me, I am addicted. Huge. Was addicted. Um, that was like that's what I drink in the mornings is diet coke. So, anyways, that's like a big like obstacle that I jumped through. So anyways, again, not that you guys care about our um, babies saying their first words or what we're eating, but it is like top of our mind. So it is. <laughs> Glad to share. Um, and then, sorry, I'm like kind of rolling here. Um, you told me you were talking about hope today. Yep. And um, at the time of this recording, like there was just a bunch of stuff going on right now with 
uh, the Ukraine and Russia invading the Ukraine. Um, and of course, like you just see all the horrible news that, Mm -hmm. um, just kind of permeates our media and news and stories through social media and stuff. So knowing you were going to talk about hope, I, this morning needed that. I needed like hope in the form of that story too, um, because it was really heavy this morning. Um, the Ukraine, uh, Zelensky, the president came on and he showed this like video that he was speaking to Congress, he's speaking to the U S Congress, trying to, um, convince them to have like a no fly zone over Ukraine. Anyways, showed a video. It was absolutely heartbreaking seeing children and mothers and men and old, you know, grandparents in wheelchairs, like trying to uh, evade the uh, Russian army. And anyways, I was just like feeling really heavy. So I was like, I need to find happy news. Not that there's happy news, but um, we always loved Fred Rogers quote, look for the helpers. Mm. And um, so that was my job this morning. I wanted to look for the helpers um, who are kind of like just shining a little tiny light in all that darkness. So I'm going to share it with you guys. Is that cool? Yes, please. I have a few. Um, And some of them you've probably heard, but I don't think there's ever any shame or harm in repeating good news because some of these are a little older, but I just love them. Um, All right. So this is the first one. People are booking Airbnbs in Ukraine, over $2 million of revenue, and they never have plans of staying there. Wow, just helping out the people who own the yeah. houses. Yeah, so um, a lot of them like would have mm. been the week that things are happening. Like, obviously, no way that they would be able to go in. Um, but people are just renting Airbnbs yeah. to give money to those hosts. Um, same thing's happening with Etsy. My mom was trying to purchase something on uh, Etsy, which is like a handmade goods kind of um, platform. And there, the lady was in Ukraine and she said, I have no way to get this to you or to even make these things. Um, but if you'd like to still purchase that item, we're taking them as donations. And so she did that, but there's just lots of really cool, that is cool. um, online options like that. I think it was really neat. Um, Airbnb is setting up a uh, hundred thousand refugees, um, from Ukraine with free housing. Wow. Um, I thought this was really cool. Elon Musk, did you hear about how Ukraine asked for internet help with internet because they're I didn't um, hear that. Obviously, with all of the bombings and destruction, they're having really a lot of trouble maintaining an internet connection. Mm-hmm. So Elon Musk sent over. He has something called like the Starlink service, which is like a universal internet. So he sent wow. over. I think it was like ten thousand something. I don't know. It was like a, an immense amount after like ten hours of hearing the need. He sent it over, and they were able to have sustained internet. Very cool. Um, and then, oh gosh, I'm, I'm going to have to pick. I've, I have too many. This is my last one. Okay. Um, <laughs> mothers in Poland. I don't know. You guys probably saw these pictures. If you haven't, you need to go look it up on the internet. But mothers in Poland were going to the train stations in the borders and setting out strollers, empty strollers, um, with baby supplies, um, stuffed animals. Wow. And even like wheelchairs, things like That's that. Cool. But so that the moms coming from Ukraine with their babies um, obviously had to flee everything, would have something to arrive to. Really that is warm. really cool. I know. I thought that was really sweet. So that's my, I had like literally seven more, so I'm just going to stop. But um, I don't know. I just needed that this morning after looking at all the heaviness. Yeah. there. I mean, never before, ah, I, I, that, I, that was a little over dramatic. This is certainly a season where hope is needed. Yeah. And, and, world events are proving that over and over again. I mean, the truth is that we all need hope. We need hope to survive. And and I'll give you a, a, kind of a couple definitions of, of hope, but one that is it's just like the most basic one is just hope is, is having a healthy sense of possibility, mm-hmm. a healthy sense of possibility. I, I, I love that definition. That's one I've always kind of had down on my notes. Um, and I love the idea of a healthy sense of possibility. And Ukraine is so inspiring. I mean, they continue to post encouraging messages and encouraging videos. Their politicians, their president, uh, their people, I think have surprised the whole world. Absolutely. Have, yeah. With the hope that they've shown. And, you know, hope gives people a reason to continue fighting and believing that the current circumstances will improve despite the unpredictable nature of human existence, the unpredictable nature of a country that's fighting against you. Like they, they've proven you can have hope in a very, very difficult situation. 
an act of hope. Again, I think it's just more relevant and necessary now, maybe more than ever before. And so there are two things. The What's going on um, there in Ukraine made me think a lot about this idea of hope, just watching how they're reacting. And I also have a friend going through a really difficult time right now, and he's having a difficult time finding hope. He can't find hope. He He's having a hard time believing right now that tomorrow is going to be any better than today. Yeah. Which is, that's kind of the opposite of hope, right? It's kind of despair. Despair is believing that your current circumstances are never going to improve. Yeah. Tomorrow won't be better than today. If you can't believe that tomorrow is going to be better than today, it's impossible to have hope. Mm-hmm. And um, so those two things, working with him, watching what's going over in Ukraine, I was like, man, we, I want to talk a little bit about hope. And, and just practically speaking, because I think we all, everyone listening to this, you have moments, you have days, sometimes you have weeks where you lack hope. And hope is like oxygen. Like without it, man, it, it doesn't take long for you to begin to just kind of dwindle, mm-hmm. right? And everybody wants hope. It's not something yes. that anyone would say, oh, I don't need that. You know, like a lot of things that we talk about, some people might be like, I don't really think I need that in my life. I think everyone would say, I need that, but it's not always super practical to like, how do I have that, you know? Yeah, and despite preconceived notions, hope is not as simple as, you know, wishing, and it's not as passive as avoidance. In other words, you can't just say, oh, I'm just going to think positive and have hope. And on the other hand, you also can't be passive and just avoid reality thinking that you can manufacture hope. And I found this awesome quote. I I think I read this years ago, but I totally forgotten about it. And I love this quote from St. Augustine. He said, hope has two beautiful daughters. Their names are anger and courage. Anger at the way things are and courage to see that they do not remain as they are. Hmm. And I never thought about like... I would not have thought about anger. Yeah, I, I, and, and maybe that's you know, an extreme word, but it's, it is, it's a, you can't be content with the way that things right. currently are. Hope, yeah. Right. And so I, I love that idea. It's, it's anger at the way things are, courage to see that they aren't going to remain that same way. I love that. And to hope is to consider the reality, right, of your situation and possess the courage to carve out this path forward despite the, how the current circumstances look. Yeah. It does. I think courage or hope takes a tremendous amount of courage. So I, let's just real practically dive into this. If you're someone who needs to develop hope, and whether that's like right now in this moment or whether you want to kind of lock this away in your mind for the next circumstance that you find yourself feeling a little hopeless, I think here are five things that can help all of us begin to cultivate hope. Some of these maybe you've thought about before, but I bet a couple of these will kind of surprise you. The first one is this. Look at how far you've come. Like the first thing I'd say to somebody who, who feels completely hopeless, like I, I thought about this with my friend who feels completely hopeless right now. It's like, think about how far you've come. And so it's kind of like that first step into finding hope is actually turning around and looking back. In other words, retrospection leads to hopefulness. Yeah, I, I love, we have a um, Peloton and we ride um with all these different instructors, but there's one Uh instructor, she says, you have already overcome your hardest days. Mm. Um, Like you have already done the hard things. You've done the hardest things so far. Um, And I've always loved that because it's like, you've you've already overcome your hardest days. That doesn't mean there's not more, but it's exactly that, like retrospection of how how far I've already come. Um, I love that. So that's kind of another way to say that, like you've already overcome your hardest days. You've survived 100% of your most difficult days. Yeah. You have. And yeah, I I think you have to kind of find a way to look back. Um, I read this article by this guy named Dr. Fishback. He's a motivational scientist. He wrote a book called Get It Done. And he was talking about this perspective and he was applying it to COVID and saying that the, the people who continue to be so overwhelmed with COVID are the ones that are so focused on how, how much disruption is still ahead of them. Mm -hmm. Right. How, how long is it going to be until life goes back to normal? The people who are more hope filled, hope filled, field, hope filled, uh, who are more hope filled in these circumstances are those who can look back and think about, wow, how, how far we've come. We've gotten the vaccine. We've come a long way. We used to have to do this and jump to this and do this. Like, and if, if you look back and see how far we've come, it really does kind of create this sense, this sense of hope. Mm-hmm. 
So okay. while turning to the past, it, it's not equal to action. Looking at what has already been achieved in the face of adversity, I think is a wonderful starting point to, to just get started. And most people, I've seen this, even in my life coaching with very successful people, they tend to way underestimate how far they've come. They tend to underestimate because most people achieve a goal. They have some kind of level of success, something maybe they've dreamed about or prayed about for a long time. They get it and and keep going. Mm -hmm. Yeah, because we're always comparing ourselves to the ideal. And that ideal is constantly shifting. It's like trying to chase after a sunset. You're never going to reach that ideal. And so if you don't stop every once in a while and look back and say, wow, Look at the growth I have. Yeah, sure. You may feel a little hopeless right now that you've not become the person you desire to be. But if you look back at the transformation that has happened in your life, it can give you hope to say, oh my gosh, yeah, there has been progress. And I I think that's a... That is a great place to start when you feel completely hopeless and you can find no other reason for hope. And write it down. I love that idea of writing it down. First of all, it really makes you actually sit down and think about it. But then you can revisit it, you know, when you or in that same spot. So I think that's a good practice yeah, too. I love that. All right, second thing is uh, join forces with someone who's also seeking hope. Uh, surround yourself with people who are seeking hope. It doesn't mean that they've even found it yet, um, but there's a lot of great examples of where loneliness just amplifies hopelessness. Yeah. So think 12-step groups. Think church. Think divorce care. Again, these are settings where it's not full of people who are all hope-filled and they've arrived at their destination, but they're people who are trying to develop a hope that life doesn't have to be the same tomorrow as it is today. Yeah, and beyond loneliness, like obviously your choice is to do that alone or to try and surround yourself with those kind of people, but also it is so easy in those situations to surround yourself with people who are also feeling hopeless Mm -hmm. um, because it's just kind of a naturally what you're drawn to because most of the time what you emit is what you attract. Um, And I think sometimes I see this in like friends that I've had in the past or, you know, people that we know you, if you, they just surround themselves with it and then they literally cyclone in this hopelessness and it feel that's when it feels the heaviest yeah so you're obviously not just by yourself in your own brain but you have other people saying yeah you're not this or that's not going to happen or this isn't going to but it's probably they're acting that way because they're also hopeless and they want other people to like sit in the misery that they sit in it's a horrible like subconscious thing but i just think that it's super important not only to not be alone but to surround yourself with um not surround yourself with the people who are going to cycle you into yeah. the negativity. It's like hope and hopelessness are both contagious. Yeah. They yeah. really are. And and when you're in a hopeless situation, you need to be around some people who who have hope yeah. to kind of catch that. Yeah, and just r- monitor what, how your heart feels after you're around people. Like it's so easy for me to like know in a moment when I'm around somebody if they are life-giving or if they are sucking the life out of you. And if it's, it's really easy to register. So anyway, just keep that top of mind. No, I love that. Uh, third thing I would say is set some big goals. Um, and, and this is where you start to think about the action that has to take place in your life in order to begin to develop hope. Hope is not just something usually that falls into our laps. It's something that we have to actively pursue. And most human beings are pretty goal-driven and not having a clear end goal is what makes it difficult to evaluate progress, to stay optimistic. And so I, you've heard me say this before because I'm, I'm a big goals guy. We have a goals course. Most of my life coaching revolves around setting goals, mm-hmm. uh, which requires hope, yeah. right? Hope naturally is associated with goals. And the fastest way to get from where you are today to where you want to be is a goal. Mm-hmm. And so create a routine, create a ritual, create a roadmap, create a plan, take small steps towards your vision and be gentle with yourself along the way, right? It's not even so much about hitting the goal. I, I talk also about a goal is as much a place to come from as it is a place to get to. And so when you set big goals, it becomes a place you begin to say, you know, if, if your big goal is losing 50 pounds, you, you embody that. You are the kind of person who's going to lose 50 pounds. It just kind of naturally kind of creates this hope yeah, in you. Yeah, you're right. It's not so much, again, a place to get to as it is a place to come from. That's good. And so I think thinking and planning are cornerstones of hope. 
Yeah, I love that. I love the because a lot of times when you don't feel hope, you feel like goals are useless. Like yeah. I can't get out of the situation I'm in. Goals are only going to make me more sad because I'm not going to get it. Um, but I love the idea of creating like this big audacious goal because you're right. Like I mean, I even think about Pete. And we're working on something right now, and it's just this new thing we've never done, and I'm already researching it and like in my mind I'm like this is what I do this is what I'm gonna be this is how I'm gonna like create in the future and it you know maybe I won't but I would much rather believe that than to not try something at all and do you feel hope around that 100 percent. yeah because you're saying I I think tomorrow is gonna be different than today yeah I think it could be different than today yeah which is exciting for anybody no matter what that goal is like so the idea of tomorrow being better is extremely energizing. Yeah, I love that. Uh, fourth thing is offer hope to someone else. This is like the motivational power of giving should not be underestimated. Um, there's a 2018 study titled Dear Abby, Should I Give Advice or Receive It? And they found in the study that struggling individuals were more motivated by giving advice than they were by receiving advice. So we often think we're in a hopeless situation, man. What I need, I need somebody to rescue me. I need somebody to come along with a motivational speech. I need somebody to drop into my life who can lay the plan out for me, give me some advice on how to get from here to there. When the reality is sometimes the most like hope-filled thing you could do is actually help somebody else. I love that. That's And in doing that, but, and which I think I I think if 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 we were to analyze what's going on in the Ukraine and why we see so many of those stories, it's because somehow they intuitively know that there's hope in helping others. Even when they're in a situation where they could completely 110% sit back and say, I'm a victim, I need somebody to help me, watching them help their own people, watching them, however you feel about you know war, seeing like like families and kids create these, you know, pieces of, of, I don't know what you call it, weaponry to stop tanks. Like people who used to be just welders for yeah. cars are now it's welding impressive. these things together to block, you know, Russian tanks from coming. It, it, it's like somehow jumping in and, and helping others. And even the, you were talking about the moms in Poland. Most people there in Poland right now are extremely scared and nervous. Yeah. Uh, because they feel like this is invasive on them as well because they're so close, they're bordering Ukraine. So to see them helping, it just makes sense. It's one of the ways that like hope begins to develop, isn't it? Yeah, I love it. And I, I think about that like practically. I don't always mean to like add in my own life practical <laughs> application, but I think about a time that you helped someone else by giving them hope in themselves or in some situation. You always walk away from that feeling good. First of all, you feel good about like being able to help somebody in that way. But there is this very, and I know that's why this is one of your points. There is this very like reciprocal, like infusion of hope to yourself. It's almost like you had to speak it to somebody else to believe maybe something for yourself. And I mean, I feel that way with, I have a few friends that I've recently like been trying to help them with a couple things because I really didn't feel like I had a great plan for, you know, something I wanted to do. And, um, so I was helping them with theirs. And then when it was done, I was so energized that it gave me, um, energy and hope to do something for myself. Mm -hmm. So I don't know. I just think that it's very practical. That one I feel like is, might be my favorite because it is a, it's helping other people, but it does ignite energy in you instantly. Yeah. Yeah. And I I think about the times in my life where I felt the most hopeless the thing that probably shocked me out of that and instilled a sense of hope in me again was doing something selfless, yeah. helping somebody in some situation, in some sort of environment. Like if, if right now you need to fast track, if there was such a thing as a magic pill to <clears throat> give somebody instant hope, I think it is helping somebody, whether they deserve it or not, uh, you putting somebody else's needs and wants and desires before your own and serving them and loving them in some capacity will almost always breathe hope back into yeah, you. Yeah, I love it. That's my favorite one. All right, ready for the fifth one? Yep. Last one, uh, surrender to a larger plan. Uh, another way you could say that is kind of admitting to some degree that you're powerless. 
which is an interesting place to land when we just gave you four things that you can do. <laughs> uh, but ultimately, I think the spare for me often takes over when I'm resisting one of two things. When I'm resisting that which has already happened mm-hmm. or I'm resisting that which hasn't happened yet. It's good. Right? Whenever I am fighting something that's already happened as if I can somehow change it, it's a colossal waste of energy. And I think that's one of the things that makes us lose hope. I have nothing to back this up. I have no quote from anybody famous or any stats (laughs) or study. But I often get the most hopeless when I'm just tired, right? When I've run out of energy. That's when I feel like my hope immune system is just weak, right? And, And despair easily gets interjected in my life. And so when I'm wasting energy trying to resist something that has already happened in life or I'm wasting energy resisting something I think might happen in the future that probably won't happen, that that's a quick way for me to begin to lose hope. Mm-hmm. So when you resist an event that's already happened, it's like uh, I thought of this illustration of uh, have you ever like thrown a big rock into like a pond that's completely still? Yeah, and all the ripples. And you start to see those ripples. Imagine trying to get in there and then contain the ripples, like push the ripples back. All that does is create more disturbance. Mm -hmm. It creates more ripples. And that's often what we do. Some rock has dropped into our life that's created some ripples that we're not happy about and we're trying to stop it. And And it's making it harder. Yes. Yeah. It it creates more disturbance. So I I think, and and I understand everybody that listens to this podcast comes from different faith backgrounds. You know, we've talked quite a bit. Both of us come from a Christian background. And there's there's a great story, I think, about that this idea of hope and this idea of surrender and how hope comes from surrender um, to, a, you know, to a larger plan. But the, the story is, uh, it's in the New Testament. There's a guy by the name of Lazarus who's a friend of Jesus's who dies. And, but before he dies, he has two sisters who are also good friends. Uh, Mary and Martha are both good friends of Jesus. And they kind of send word, hey, Lazarus, your friend is sick. Like, we need you to come. And, uh, you know, Jesus, for one reason or another, I won't go into all this, doesn't come right away. Lazarus dies. He still doesn't rush there. You know, there's some time that passes. When he finally shows up, one of the sisters approaches Jesus, and and she's mad. She is upset. She is full of despair because her brother Lazarus has died. And essentially what she says to Jesus is, hey, if you had been here, if you would have come when we asked you to come, this wouldn't have happened. And that always struck me because she wasn't questioning what she believed to be the power of Jesus to heal, right? In fact, she was saying, hey, if you'd have been here, this wouldn't happen. She wasn't questioning Mm -hmm. his power. She was questioning his timing. Mm -hmm. And so I just kind of had this belief that true hope comes from not just trusting in God's power. It also comes from accepting his timing. Mm -hmm. You got to have both. It is not enough just to trust that that there's a God that is more powerful than you. You also have to be willing to trust that, that that timing. And it's it's getting to that place of surrender of saying, this moment that I'm living in, even though it's not exactly the way I would want this moment to be, I'm going to trust, right? I'm going to trust that I'm exactly where I need to be and that somehow this moment is teaching me something that I could never learn any other way. Now, this doesn't in any way, in my opinion, contradict some of the other things we've said where you know you can choose to surround yourself with hopeful people. You can choose to set a goal, right? You can choose to help others, which might... like. So yes, there are choices that you can make. It's not yeah. saying here's where I am, this is where I need to be, and this is where I need to stay the rest of my life. That's not it, because you can make choices to instill hope and cultivate hope into your life, but at the same time, there it is, and I, and I, understand, I know this is a complicated concept, but there's still at the same time this surrender to this larger plan that actually, despite me not being exactly where I want to be, I'm exactly where I need to be. Mm-hmm. And I think that a big step of growth for a lot of us who would claim to be, you know, faith-filled people is not only believing that God has power, but also believing that you're going to trust his timing. Yeah, that's really good. I I think back to the comment you made about you're right where you need to be. And I think 
amidst like the hopelessness and sometimes like despair, that doesn't seem possible. Like how could this be helpful in any way, shape or form? And that doesn't mean that there's not like hardships and grief and things like that, that sometimes come with the hopelessness that are real emotion. But at the same time, like if you think about seasons of your life where you would have said like, this is a, this feels hopeless. Um, I can think back to a situation like that in my life. It had that season not happened. I would not be where I am. I would not um, have the passions I have. I would not have the compassion I have. So I, you know, I say all that to say, like, if you are amidst that season right now, we've been there. Um, I think anybody would say that they've been in a season like that. But Mm -hmm. I say that to encourage you in knowing that without those seasons that felt hopeless for us, um, we wouldn't be where we are today. Yeah. I totally agree with that. So it's interesting. I just, just kind of crossed my miles looking back to my notes that the first four things to cultivate hope are things you can do. You can look at how far you've come. You can seek out other people, right, that uh, are hope-filled. You can set big goals. You can offer hope, right, to other people uh, by helping them. Um but that last one, that idea of surrender is, it, it, I guess it is something you do, but more of it's something you let go of. Yeah. And that is that ideal where you thought you'd be, who you thought you'd be with, uh, all those kind of things, being willing to, to surrender those and trust that, that there is a plan. Yeah. I think you almost have to do that first before you can even do those other mm. four. To first surrender and then your your heart and head is in the right place to do all those other things. Um, that's my personal. Yeah, no, opinion. that's interesting. Yeah, you might be right. I mean, no, I'm not. I know I those weren't chronological. I no, I didn't put them in any kind of like <laughs> yeah. sequential order. Yeah. Of like this is the way you have to do them. Totally. But that's a great. That's a great point. Yeah, I just think if your head and heart is right in that way. Um, otherwise, if you think you're still kind of like, if if you're still like muddling in the, like the control, then all those other things I don't think will come from the right place. But anyway, that's super super helpful. I'm always well, so impressed how you can like take this like topic that feels inaccessible, like enable, intangible, and then make some practical ways to um, come about them. Truly, I'm not just saying that oh, because you're you. my husband. I'm saying that because that's impressive to me. I think it's just a teacher part of me that I, yeah. I like to take concepts like that and say, okay, well, what do we do about that? How do yeah. we how do we get unstuck? And I, I do. I think there's so many people right now who need hope. And it might have to do with relationships. It might have to do with their career. It might have to do with their kids. Um, there's just a lot of people who find themselves right now in a place where life is not turning out the way they thought it was going to turn out. Um, and they, they right now don't have the ability to really believe that tomorrow is going to be any better than today. Yeah. Again, that's what despair is. And so I hope that maybe there's just one of those five things that could trigger some kind of idea, some kind of motivation for you to actually begin to believe that tomorrow does not have to be the same as today. Yeah. Anything's possible. It's really good. Um, well, that's one of those, I feel like sometimes we have topics on the podcast that's super shareable for people who might be going through something like that. Um, so feel free to share that one. If you know somebody who could use some message of hope and encouragement, I think that's like, I love, like I said, I love the practical application of that. Um, so please share that if you know somebody who would benefit from it. Um, as always, please subscribe and share and like, and all the things. Um, if you guys listen on our podcast, you probably know we also have a youtube channel so um, if you ever want to actually watch we do have a channel there you can subscribe and it sends the the um, videos to your email every week so um thank you for the the hope filled conversation well thank you for batting the idea of hope around with me it was fun (laughs) all right uh we love you guys we're so grateful for you uh we hope and pray that if you're in a place where you feel hopeless that this will be encouraging to you and if you really find yourself super stuck shoot us an email we'd love to help you in any way that we possibly can Uh, have an amazing week and that was another good talk